Good morning. It's a crappy day. Dun 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 dun. Spy cam. The spy cam actually. It's better than I thought it'd be. Okay, so I just showered. I'm about to start editing over there, over there, over there. Mo Clips is ready. Are you ready for breakfast? Kibble, yeah. You need you need some re up on that kib. Mo Clips, look at the camera. There we go. You want some kib, yo? Yeah. I like to give Mo Clips a little half scoop of the finest kibble. And breakfast is served. We have some leftover oatmeal here. So you know what that means. That's right, it's been a while. Leftover oatmeal. A pancakes. <laughs> See if I can remember how to do this. We got Mo Clips supervising over here. Mo Clips, how am I doing? Mo Clips. Whew. All right. Bye. I think I have perfected the leftover oatmeal pancakes. I'm pretty sure. If I go by looks, I would say these are looking pretty bomb. Okay, so now we're at the tasting stage. So I have jam on one side. I got peanut butter on this other side. Oh yeah, pancakes. Duh. Just the peanut butter now. Oh yeah, pancakes all day. I just got done editing. This is a nice, long, old fashioned, long ass vlog. I like having longer vlogs, but I don't like editing longer vlogs. I think I actually started real editing at eh, around four so this this took five hours this actually wasn't that bad it just felt like it took forever i don't know what happened i woke up at 12 30 i took a shower made some coffee did my intro started up on the pancakes next thing i knew the coffee was like yo it's been two hours i'm turning off and i was like what what i made the pancakes i started on the editing but uh, i just I guess I couldn't really kick myself into gear until about four. And now it is nine o'clock, nine. I finished at like 9.05. <sighs> it's just tiring. Anyways, I still have here, I still have my breakfast. I am currently working on finishing my breakfast. We got donation from Adam. I'm taking little scraps of the sausage and some of the fat that was left in the pan and I'm gonna make gravy. I have potatoes left over from last night so I'm gonna have mashed potatoes, some gravy. I haven't fully committed to if I'm gonna do ham. I feel like sausage gravy and ham is like too much meat. I might just eat mashed potatoes honestly. Food is a happening. A chef C.R. Becerra a coming through. And about five minutes later, boom, sausage gravy and mashed potatoes. Shopping. Yeah, I didn't go with anything else. I think this would probably do it. I mean, mashed potatoes and gravy is just fine. All right, so the vlog is up. We have a nice old fashioned 18 minute vlog. Whew. So that means this vlog is going to be pretty short. Vlog is up. That's pretty much all I did was eat. But I did want to say today, well, t when you see this, it will be yesterday. Today, as I know it, is Black Poetry Day. In honor of Black Poetry Day, I thought maybe I would share a couple poems with you. And yeah, so here we go. These poems are by Langston Hughes. So I'm gonna do, I think, two poems unless I'm feeling like saucy. I was thinking three. We'll see how I feel. So I'm gonna read off two poems from Langston Hughes. Langston Hughes was one of the first black poets that I was ever aware of. I think I found him in middle school, seventh grade, something like that. And I had a book of his poems and I thought, wow, these are pretty cool. Maybe I could write poems. 
I'm, I don't write poems. I thought at one point in my life that maybe I could and should be writing poems, but we'll leave that up to the professionals. Back to Langston Hughes though. Langston Hughes was born here in the U.S. in Janice, Missouri, I'm gonna say 1902, February 1st. He is known as a, a primary contributor to the Harlem Renaissance. The Harlem Renaissance spanned from the mid 1920s to, well, through the 20s. Originally, the Harlem Renaissance at the time, while it was happening, was known as, I believe, the, the New Negro Movement, which is named after an anthology by Alan Locke, who, Alan Locke is known as the, the Dean of the Harlem Renaissance. So Langston Hughes was known as a primary contributor. Alan Locke was the Dean of the Harlem Renaissance. He's known as the philosophical architect of the Harlem Renaissance, which during that time, as it was happening, was known as the New Negro Movement. So the Harlem Renaissance, which spanned again in the 1920s, I'm gonna say the mid to late 1920s, the Harlem Renaissance is significant because it marks a moment in history when white America was finally acknowledging the intellectual contributions of black people to the American culture. The Harlem Renaissance is also significant because it helped kind of revitalize black pride and African American culture. So it's, it's important. The Harlem Renaissance. Look it up. If you look it up, you'll find more information than I just gave you, but that's the gist of what it was. It happened in Harlem. So Langston Hughes, even though he was born in Janus, Missouri, he actually traveled a lot. His parents divorced when he was young. So he moved around. He actually, he graduated high school from Cleveland, Ohio, then moved down to Mexico to live with his dad for a little bit, about a year and a half, I think. And he went on, he went to like Columbia University and then he joined a, a ship crew and lived in France and Venice and Genoa for a while. So he's, he was known at the time and as a young, bright, intellectual person of, of word power in the black community in Harlem at the time. So without further ado, I am gonna read off a couple poems of his. Maybe you'll like them, maybe you'll look up some more, maybe you'll look up the Harlem Renaissance, it's cool. American history is cool. So this one I am going to read is called uh, The Weary Blues. And I'm reading this from, actually this is the Heath Anthology of American Literature, which I've read this book from cover to cover and it's got some good stuff in it. It's got American history, it's got poetry, it's got short stories, it's got plays, it's got everything in here. So there's a lot of these too in the Heath an Anthology. This is volume D. I think I have volume D and E, but there's obviously A, B, C, F, G, A. I don't know how high they go up, but there's a lot of them. This one is the modern period. So the modern period is 1910 to 1945, if you're interested in what the modern period is for American literature. The Weary Blues by Langston Hughes. Droning a drowsy syncopated tune, rocking back and forth to a mellow croon, I heard a Negro play down on Lenox Avenue the other night by the pale pallor of an old gas light. He did a lazy sway, he did a lazy sway to the tune of those weary blues with his ebony hands on each ivory key. He made that poor piano moan with melody, oh blues. Swaying to and fro on his rickety stool, he played that sad raggy tune like a musical fool. Sweet blues coming from a black man's soul, oh blues. In a deep song voice with a melancholy tone, I heard that Negro sing, that old piano moan. Ain't got nobody in all this world, ain't got nobody but myself. I was gonna quit my frowning and put my troubles on the shelf. Thump, 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 
went his foot on the floor. He played a few chords and he sang some more. I got the weary blues and I can't be satisfied. I got the weary blues and can't be satisfied. I ain't happy no more and I wish I had died. And far into the night, he crooned that tune. The stars went out and so did the moon. The singer stopped playing and went to bed while the weary blues echoed through his head. He slept like a rock or a man that's dead. That poem really got Mo Clips all jazzed up. Speaking of jazz, that was going on during the 1920s. Um, so this poem was from 1925, right at the beginning of the Harlem Renaissance. I had to get up real quick and I feel like Mo Clips moved the camera, but I can't prove it. Okay, so we had Weary Blues, which was right in the middle of the Harlem Renaissance, as I mentioned earlier. I think I'm actually gonna do two more poems. They're gonna be small though. Here is now another poem from the Harlem Renaissance. Sorry, Mo Clips is right over there. This one is called I Too, and it's one of Langston Hughes' most famous poems. I too sing, America. I am the darker brother. They send me to eat in the kitchen when company comes, but I laugh and eat well and grow strong. Tomorrow I'll be at the table when company comes. Nobody will dare say to me, eat in the kitchen then. Besides, they'll see how beautiful I am and be ashamed. I too am America. Mo Clips is being really distracting for poetry time. Right now I will read Harlem, which is a piece of a montage of A Dream Deferred. And A Dream Deferred is a montage of poems published by Langston Hughes, 1951. So this is Langston Hughes' first major publication after World War II. Montage of a Dream Deferred is 75 pages, 91 poems, and they're all little snippets, and they all have to do with the state of Harlem at the time post-World War II. This is called Harlem, but the giant aspect of everything is Montage of a Dream Deferred, which is 91 poems, and it's what is called jazz-style poetry. Here we go. <laughs> Harlem from Montage of a Dream Deferred. What happens to a dream deferred? Does it dry up like a raisin in the sun? Or fester like a sore and then run? Does it stink like rotten meat? Or crust and sugar over like syrupy sweet? Maybe it just sags like a heavy load or does it explode? Jazz poetry. That is Langston Hughes, guys. Those were three poems. So once again, we have two from the Harlem Renaissance that was Weary Blues, followed with I Too. I Too, I know for a fact, is a very famous Langston Hughes poem. Harlem, also very famous, but it's more popularly known as A Dream Deferred. So if you look up A Dream Deferred, you'll actually find a bunch of different poems. Harlem is one of the most popular that you'll find, but the reason why that is, is because it comes from Montage of A Dream Deferred, which is 91 poems, I believe, 91. So that concludes American Literature History with Carmen! Yeah, I didn't think so. <laughs> today was, so you'll see this tomorrow, but today is, yesterday was, Black Poetry Day. If you're watching this now and you're interested in checking out some Langston Hughes, I advise to do it. And me, personally, I'd like to, you know, shout out to Langston Hughes somewhere out there for being, aside from Shel Silverstein, the first poet that I ever looked into and read and got interested in poetry. 
So yeah, Langston Hughes, he passed away in 1962. I believe in Harlem, but don't quote me in, don't quote me on that though. The other stuff you can quote me on, I'm sure of that. That is fact. You can definitely quote me on that. For future reference, look up the Harlem Renaissance or the New Negro Movement. Look up Langston Hughes and check that out. And also I mentioned um, Alan Locke. Check out the Dean of the Harlem Renaissance, the philosophical architect of the Harlem Renaissance. Pretty good stuff. Thank you for joining me in Literature Corner with Carmen! Literary Culture with Carmen! I'll stop trying. Since I'm sitting in this chair and I have the hoodie on and we did the poems, I think this is a good time to call it a night. So. I just want to thank you for liking, subscribing, commenting, whatever you're doing, playing along. I appreciate it. And I'll see you tomorrow. Bye! Moclips Kitten. Hi, Kitty Cat. Nine Night Kitty Cat. You go, Kitty Cat. You're a good Kitty Cat. Nine Night.